You might think with all the running around I do at various games that it would be a workout unto itself, but I try to keep a routine now and then. Number three, 3A Star Valley versus number three, 4A Cheyenne East in an interclass matchup at Green River. First quarter, Star Valley wearing the white, already up three nothing. Cole Critchfield with a swish and he will double the score with one shot. That means we have ourselves a six zip game so far. East would actually find themselves in an eight nothing hole before they finally got to work. Zach McCord with the pull up jumper to get his 17 point game started, but his team still has more work to do, trailing eight to two. The Braves were trying to keep the opposition down in a deep hole. And speaking of deep, Critchfield again. He led all scores with 19 points, and the game plan was working so far with the scoreboard reading 11 to two. The Thunderbirds needed to wake up in more ways than one. It's not even 10 a.m. yet, and you know how some high schoolers are. Connor Leasing delivers a wake-up call that was badly needed, but his team is still down 11 to five. They were starting to pick up the pace and it would produce points. McCord stops, pops, and hits for two more in order to keep pace, trailing 13 to seven. East needed to get closer and needed a momentum shifter. Tyler Wienberger has one of those. Bank shot and gets the bounces for three. Now they are in this game, only down 13 to 10, which is much better than earlier. The boys in blue were on the move and had the moves as well. Check out this assist from McCord ahead to Caleb Reed who will get the finish. We have ourselves a ball game. It was 13 to 12 after the first eight minutes. Second quarter, the momentum was growing. Leasing with the steal and he'll bring it back for two more. The lead has changed hands. It's 14 to 13 following a 12 to two run. Star Valley needed to regroup, but it was not easy. Jacob Pearson is gonna brave the waters, so to speak, and gets the bucket. That would give the advantage back to his squad, now ahead 15 to 14. And Critchfield was still on the floor, so there was always the possibility that he was gonna do something, and he did. Three more for the cause, and the pendulum has swung back in his team's direction, up 18 to 14. East had a few more weapons at their disposal though, and they would use them. This is Tyler Peoples going the distance and getting the bucket and the lead back again. The score is 20 to 18. The Braves were giving them a challenge though. Here's a new guy, Cody Orton eyes it, spies it, and buys it for three. That was a good deal. His squad would go back on top 23 to 20. The Thunderbirds have not made many of those shots, but that was about to change. McCord is gonna pull the court on one and hits. That helped. The boys in blue would go ahead 26 to 23, going into the locker room. Third quarter, they would get a bit more crafty and it paid off. We have not seen Elijah Oliver yet and neither has the defense. He would score on the rebound try to help put East ahead by a score of 28-23. I'm not sure where the sophomore was in the first half, but he picked a good time to show up. This shot will need a few extra bounces, but he would get the drop and two more to push the score up to 30 to 23. As for Star Valley, their pace had slowed compared to the first quarter. Orton will try to get some of it back on this drive and bucket. Every little bit helped, but they were looking up at a 30 to 25 disadvantage. Critchfield was still on the floor and he did his part a long time ago, so could he produce a few more points? Um, yes he could. That would close the deficit and it is a 32 to 28 score. Now this highlight was darn right sneaky. Bronson Muir, give and go and score. Hope you did not blink because that was fast. The Braves are within striking distance, down 32 to 30. But that was as close as they would get because the defense could not stop Oliver. He had a hard time missing. 17 points, all of them in the second half. And that would put the boys in blue ahead 34 to 30. Want more from Oliver? We can do that. He just had to help himself. Three ball in the side pocket, swish. He did whatever he wanted to do. East is now ahead 37 to 30. The Braves would go to the bench to try to get back into this one. This is Max Fletcher open at the top of the key. Give him three. That's one way to do it, but his team is still trailing 37 to 33. The long ball was starting to work again. Orton off of the inbounds, ring him up. Star Valley just needs one more to tie the score. They are only down 39-36. The Thunderbirds would pick up the pace speed-wise, however. Two on one, and McCord will win this exchange. That bucket would open up some breathing room, up 42 to 36. He still has some firepower in his arsenal as well. Here's a jumper from 17 feet away, and he will connect on that one. The boys in blue would take a 44 to 36 advantage into the final eight minutes. Fourth quarter, it took a couple of minutes before anyone did anything. Oliver again, and he was pretty much Mr. Automatic in the second half. The lead is now up to 10, it's 46 to 36. 
East probably had the better play selection and execution in this game. Case in point, Deshea Hunt draws the defense in and then dishes to a wide open Oliver. No problem on that one. 48 to 36 is the score and time is becoming a factor with a difference at 12 points. The Braves needed some defense and transition to start showing up. Critchfield will make that happen here. The steal, fast break, assist to Kyler Battleson who will get the two, but it's 50 to 40 with 2.19 to go, which is not a good spot to be in if you are losing. But that defense thing was starting to pay off. McCord will get relieved of his duties. Critchfield is gonna take care of this job himself, weave through traffic and score. Maybe, maybe, it's a seven point deficit at 50 to 43. And there was more defense. Chase Critchfield picks off the pass and brings it back uncontested for a lay-in. The thing was that the opposition was knocking down their free throw, so Star Valley is still down 52 to 45. At this point, the Thunderbirds had had just about enough. Oliver is on the run and he says, defend this. He did not dunk because he was saving it for the dunk contest later that night. East would prevail in a pretty good game 58 to 47.